Deadly Standards 2, The Standards of Hell, a community project headed by Walter Confetti. Map 1 is by Liberation and Crunchy Nut 44. 95322. That's a nice little view at the back end. So this is just a, this is actually limit removing, so a little bit more detail than uh, Shores of Hell, but done in the vein of Shores of Hell. And my first impression is, very nice, looks cool. Um, obviously this one doesn't take after... Um, Deimos Anomaly that much, but it certainly takes after Shores of Hell. So that's cool. Hmm, thought I found a secret. I did not. But yeah, really cool appearance here. I like the crates being moved around and flashing lights, a nice building with a little um, metal trim across the top. And then we've got a blue door here. Which looks like an elevator. And then we've got this. If it's anything like Shores of Hell, there will be a secret plasma gun somewhere. But. You never know. Only two secrets. It's a nice little trap there. You go for the shells and boom, you might get stuck. Especially with a little bit of a divot in the wall there. If you're not quick, you could get stuck. A little misalignment there. If we're doing Doom 1 emulation, not that big a deal, I suppose. Another little window there. Looks like that could be a secret. Green wall? Yeah, probably not. It is a teleporter. Oh, okay. So you work your way around to the teleporter. That door doesn't open yet. Okay. Um. Yeah, E2 actually has a lot of very non-linear maps. Um, although, although map 1 is certainly pretty linear. You can get some ideas of what's coming, but you kind of are guided into one direction. And that's kind of what's happening here, so not bad. Oh, wow. Just teleport right into the hellishness, huh? Can't go back either. Yeah, not too exciting there. You kind of just teleport and they start coming after you. Easy to dispatch them as they come. Doom 1, old school, so you're not always going to see a trap when you hit a switch or something. Could be a secret door. Really nice looking map though. Um, and it looks like this goes out somewhere I've already been. Wait, not that, but... Oh no. Yeah, right there. It looks like that's somewhere I've already been, which is kind of cool. What's going on? Oh, wow, there's a lot going on out there. Huh. This all changed now. Now I got a little window out there. 
So I don't know, is that door open now? Is that what's going on here? Oh no, I have the blue key. Okay. And now we're going down. Pretty cool. Yeah, cool little design. You, you really can see all of that play out before it happens. You kinda know what's gonna happen. This is probably gonna be a little bit too much room to work with for this to be a threatening fight down here. I mean, it, there's a lot of space. And as you go through this space, you're not really unlocking, unleashing too many more monsters either. Not that M1 has to be all that hard. Is that where I came up? That's where I came down, okay. What else we got down here? You survived all that? I don't actually know what this switch did. I wasn't really paying attention when I hit it. But that's okay. Probably needed it to... I don't know, maybe it raised a bridge or something. But yeah, this is actually a pretty cool setup here now that I'm underground and... It's n uh, yeah, I guess it's just a nice connection to the previous map. You really feel like you are under the part you already played. I think that imp was stuck. You see that? Might want to rewind that and go slow motion there. I think that imp was stuck. Yeah, really nice use of the the SP rock. I mean, it, it's certainly pretty dominant, but what makes it nice is uh, the, the way that it's kind of, the buildings are kind of built into it and around it. You do have some supplementary textures. It's not all SP rock. You get some uh, ash wall as well, as far as natural textures. But the other thing is that <clears throat> the different heights and, and contours and stuff, you know, it's not just flush across the top, and that makes a, a really big difference. Also got some different lighting going on. So the SP rock is shaded in some parts. Works out really well. Yeah, perhaps a somewhat missed opportunity there. Let's go right back. Okay. You got demons coming right after after you. So, uh, <laughs> I think perhaps a somewhat missed opportunity would be to have some non-deaf monsters. As soon as you start shooting these demons, you hear the whatever of the cack demon, and he's coming at you, and or something, or I don't know, maybe a couple of lost souls. But yeah, there's no, yeah, there. All the monsters in this area are are deaf, so I think that would be a. Because, you, I mean, you teleport, boom, you react, you shoot, and then boom, monster's coming at you. That might work out decently. Maybe not. I don't know. Just an idea. Good shot. Not. Now, I remember that. <laughs> That's very E1-ish. Oh, that's the damaging floor, crap. Yeah, I guess a little bit of a reason to kill them swiftly, because, you know, you're backing up and you know there's that damaging floor. But still a little bit grindy and tedious when a door opens and it's just four demons in front of you. But yeah, I gotta say, this is a pretty good looking map. Is this supposed to be damaging? Because the reason that they fall in E2M1 is that the floor is damaging, but it's not. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be damaging.
Okay, what would the switch do? Um, this is something. The map tells me it's something. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I gotta go back. I don't know what the switch did. Oh, yeah, that's right. The bars. Right here. Another teleport. Look, there's the exit. Okay. A little restock. supposed to jump like that. <laughs> oh, that's where I am. Okay. Red. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what you're supposed to do. This is damaging, so that's obviously not correct. I'm a little bit confused now. <laughs> Teleporter. Um, the red key's way over there. How do I get there? So you go up here, teleport out here, and come over here, you get the red key, which is pretty easy jump, so I can't imagine this is a sequence break. So I gotta go to the red door. Let's do that. Do I need to go to this teleporter? All the way back? Oh. <laughs> What's going on? I'm confused. Um, let's see. Okay, I gotta save because I'm gonna die from that stupid thing. Oh, that opens the yellow door. Okay. Okay. Or the yellow lift. Okay. That makes sense. Yellow door. Oh. You know, maybe the red door is actually the secret door or optional door. I just don't know how to get back to that area. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Is that going to be my plasma gun? That would be helpful. <laughs> of course it's my plasma gun. Now that there's one enemy, now that you're the only enemy to use it on. So yeah, a little bit strange if you ask me. Just considering where you get the red key. There we go. 
Yeah, I mean, you don't get the red key until you're out here. This is the last fight of the map. So you could go get the red key and immediately run all the way back to the red door and then come back and f do this fight with the plasma gun, I guess? It just seems kind of odd. I mean, I, I don't really believe in continuous play. Maybe it's there for that purpose. But it seems like kind of an odd secret that you really... It's going to be really hard to be able to use it because you're just kind of done by the time you get it. Alright. Yeah, 50 health at the end. Maybe it is kind of designed with an eye towards continuous. Alright. Outpost Lima Charlie. Yeah, I like it. Um, certainly feels like E2. Not necessarily a, a rip of, of E2 M1 Deimos Anomaly, which is great. Um, that's I'm sure that's not what the goal was, just kind of emulate E2 in general. Fun map, uh, pretty big map, not horribly long, not really difficult. Really the only question I have is about that secret. Maybe there's another way to get to that red key earlier. I, I, I don't know, that could be. <clears throat> but the way I play it seems like kind of an odd secret. Um, yeah, nothing really to complain about. Nice uh, visuals, some, some fun lighting, some cool little nods to E2 things from Doom. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just certainly think a successful, um, if this is, you know, what we can expect from this wad, then I think it's going to be a successful E2 replacement. I should mention I have played a few of the maps. Apparently I've already played five, uh, five, seven, and eight, or five, eight, and nine. Two of them by Rufy, and then one by don't even remember who. So, um... And, and they were good. I, I, I enjoyed them. I remember, I believe I remember enjoying them. So, so yeah, I think a pretty high quality wad put together here. All right.